In this video, we're going to learn about isomorphisms. Isomorphisms is a fun, interesting topic. We're going to see that we can view a graph as a picture of a relationship on a set. And since it really doesn't matter how you draw the picture, so long as you define the relationship, it should be the same graph. So, in a previous exercise or example, we saw that these two graphs are the same graph. One is a C4, and one is the complete bipartite, K22. But in the case where we have four vertices, these two graphs are the same. Before we continue our discussion with the C4 and the K22, let's look at another example that we have seen. This is Peterson's graph, and as we saw before, we have a different drawing of Peterson's graph. How do we know that the graph on the right is really the same graph? Well, if we pick any vertex, like if we pick the vertex 1 at the top, we notice that the vertex 1 is adjacent to vertices 5, 9, and 2. And vertex 1 on the right is also adjacent to 5, 9, and 2. If we were to check every single vertex, all 10 of them, we would make the same observation. So in fact, if we skip to vertex 10, we see that vertex 10 on the left is adjacent to 6, 9, and 3. And vertex 10 on the right is also adjacent to 6, 9, and 3. So thinking about graphs, first we want to realize that a graph is not a geometric thing. This means we don't have angles we don't have scaled proportions of edges. The only thing that a graph is, is a collection of points called vertices and connecting lines that we call edges. But really, a graph is a picture representation of a relationship on a set. The set is represented by the vertices and two elements of the set are related if and only if the corresponding vertices are connected by an edge. So two elements are either related or not if the relationship is well defined. So two vertices are either connected or not according to the relationship. That's why it really doesn't matter how you draw it, so long as you preserve the relationships. So as we've seen before, these are two different drawings, but they're the same exact graph. So you return to the first example. Notice that we can trace out a cycle on the complete bipartite graph on the left. If we start at the top, we have the first edge on the top colored red. If we continue with the red coloring, now across on the diagonal we have our second red edge. And across the bottom, the third. And then back to the top. So it's more obvious if we follow the tracing out using the red edges that the graph on the left is a cycle on four vertices. And of course the graph on the right is a cycle on four vertices, so they're the same graph. But based on our previous discussion, that means we should be able to label the vertices so that if well, so that they have the same neighbors in both graphs. 
On the left, we can simply follow the tracing out of the cycle and label our vertices as we encounter them. And we see that this is a labeling that corresponds to the cycle on the right. But more formally, for much larger graphs, we would need something different other than just looking at neighbors or tracing out cycles. So the formal definition, the way we want to think about an isomorphism, is a mapping that is a bijection, a one-to-one onto mapping that preserves adjacency. So for this example, it is fairly straightforward to see that 1 should go to A and 2 to B, since we traced out our cycle that way, 3 to C and 4 to D, and that takes us back to 1. But now that we have this mapping, what we want it to do is to preserve adjacencies. So, for example, we have mapped 1 to A. That means that the neighbors of 1, which are 4 and 2, should map to the neighbors of A, which are B and D. And sure enough, 4 and 2 map to B and D. So another way to think of it is once we have set up our one-to-one -one correspondence, then that correspondence should map neighbors to neighbors as well. The formal way to define this is to say that it preserves adjacency. So our definition of an isomorphism is a bijection from vertex set to the other vertex set that preserves adjacency, which means if U and B are adjacent in the original graph G, then their image under the bijection F of U and F of E should also be adjacent. And if U and V are not, adjacent in G, then F of U and F of V should not be adjacent. So it's an if and only if relation. So such a mapping that has this adjacency preserving condition is our graph isomorphism. And so two graphs are isomorphic if there exists a graph isomorphism between the vertex sets. So often, if you're asked to verify that two graphs are isomorphic, you would have to define the mapping. You would say, let F be, and actually define the mapping, which is your isomorphism, and then that would verify that the graphs are isomorphic. So we've talked about a graph being a picture of a relation on a set. And therefore, how you draw the picture doesn't matter as long as you've maintained or preserved the relationship between the vertices. We've given the formal definition of a graph isomorphism and what it means for two graphs to be isomorphic. Don't forget that each of these videos corresponds to reading material in our textbook. So you can supplement this video by looking on your syllabus and seeing what pages in the textbook this video corresponds to.